Today, we're gonna to be comparing Spotify and Apple Music head to head to tell you which service is better in 2022. This is a bit of a follow-up to a video I did about a year ago where I compared the four major streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, and Amazon Music. Now we're gonna take a deep dive and look at the two biggest players in the streaming music market. So let's get into it. When comparing these two streaming giants, it's important to note the history here. Spotify was way ahead of any other player, launching in North America in 2011, although they were in the UK before that. Spotify has benefited from this first mover advantage and today has a 31% market share of paid subscribers, somewhere in the range of 162 million. Of course, Apple has a rich history of music. Inventors of the iPod and iTunes, they had already revolutionized the music industry once. Apple pioneered the 99 cent song, which rejuvenated the revenue of the struggling music labels of the day back in 2003. But Apple Music, the streaming service, didn't launch until 2015. Even with Apple's billions and massive resources, they're still the number two streaming service today. They hold 15% of the market share and roughly 78 million subscribers. To determine which one is best for you though, we can look at these four categories. Audio quality, what's the listening experience like? Compatibility, what devices can you listen to music on? Music recommendations and finding new music and price and value. Let's start with audio quality. I'll start by pointing out that you'll care more about this if you're an audiophile. Spotify has multiple bit rates depending on your connection and if you're a paid subscriber. 96 kilobits per second, 160 kilobits per second, and 320 kilobits per second. Apple Music, on the other hand, streams at a standard quality of 256 kilobits per second in their AAC format. However, with Apple Music, you can activate an additional setting which turns on lossless or high-res lossless audio, ranging from 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz, which is CD quality, up to 24-bit 192 kilohertz. Now, I personally tried this out, switching back and forth between Apple Music and Spotify, listening to the same tracks. I can tell the difference slightly but only because I'm listening for it. That said, if you have a pair of quality wired headphones or a sound system that can take advantage, you're probably someone who would appreciate the lossless experience. Apple Music also has Dolby Atmos with spatial audio. Essentially, it's all about immersion and the feeling like you're in the middle of the music. Instead of stereo audio where you get a left and a right channel, Spatial audio gives you a custom sound mix where it sounds like different instruments, vocals, and sound effects are coming from all around you. Vocals are often mixed in a way that provides a more clear listening experience. But it's different than the original studio mix intended. That said, you'll need a good pair of headphones to get the full immersive experience, and Spatial Audio actually has a mixed bag of reviews. Some people like it on some tracks, but the actual execution has seemed to be inconsistent, and for some tracks, it just doesn't sound that great. So bottom line, if you're a true audiophile, choose Apple Music. If not, it probably doesn't matter, but Apple wins this category. Compatibility. Now, I specifically bring up compatibility because I have historically had issues in this area with Apple Music. Spotify has been on a mission to be on every platform, whereas Apple has been taking its time. For example, until recently, you could not listen to Apple Music on PlayStation or Xbox game consoles. And that's a big deal when you're gaming. Naturally, at least for me, I want to listen to some tunes while I roast some online competitors. So that one thing specifically held me back from switching to Apple Music. Same thing goes for my Google Nest devices. Until recently, Apple Music just wasn't available. I had my YouTube Music subscription linked up with my Nest Hub until about a few months ago when Apple Music was finally enabled. And that's kind of the story with Apple Music. It's catching up in this space. There are 
now more devices that will work with Apple Music, but Spotify is still ahead by a decent margin here. For example, there's more smart TVs and streaming boxes that have Spotify versus Apple Music. Spotify is on Apple TV, Samsung, Sony, Philips, and LG TVs, as well as Google Chromecast, Roku, and Amazon Fire TV sticks. Apple Music, on the other hand, is just on Apple TV, Roku, Samsung, and LG Smart TVs. What's more, Spotify has Spotify Connect, unlike anything available from Apple. With Spotify Connect, you can choose nearby Chromecast or AirPlay devices, or you can also select from devices that are already signed in on Spotify, such as your computer or game console, allowing you to control music that's playing there. It's incredibly versatile and allows you to play Spotify on almost anything with a speaker. As I said, Apple has made up some ground, but if you want to be confident, you can listen to your music at any time, any place, on any device. Spotify is the clear winner. Music recommendations and discovery. Okay, so let's talk about the music discovery in each of these applications. Or as I like to refer to it, it's the just listen to some music experience. You know, when you open the app and you just want to start playing some music right away. So you can get into whatever you're planning, like socializing, cooking, cleaning, doing homework, whatever. That's quite often how most people approach their listening session when they first open the application. So how good is that experience? Let's start with Apple Music. Apple Music actually has a tab called Listen Now, meant exactly for that purpose. You can tap there and everything on this page is gonna be recommendations based on your listening habits. Alongside other recommendations, Apple has a few playlists or stations that are built specially for you. They have Get Up, which is upbeat music. They have Chill Mix, which is the opposite, more low key tunes. Then they have your favorites mix, which is artists and songs that you typically have on high rotation. And finally, they have new music mix, which is a music discovery playlist specifically based on artists or genres you've listened to in the past. Those are the personalized playlists, but they also build a special radio station for you, which never ends. And it is personalized with both songs you've heard and new songs you haven't. Within some of these playlists is some excellent music discovery and rediscovery. Apple also has a browse tab, which is less personalized, but still provides lots of recommendations for you to check out based on genres of music you listen to. It's here you can find some of their biggest playlists like new and pop, hip hop, country, as well as top 25 playlists for the major cities in Canada. Apple has a unique feature as well as they have a radio tab and they are basically hosting real radio stations. They aren't actually broadcasting through traditional radio waves. It's only on the internet, but everything else is effectively the same. They have radio hosts, radio shows, countdowns, request shows, and everything in between. The only thing they don't have is ads except for the occasional house ad. They have three live radio stations, Apple Music One, Apple Music Hits, and Apple Music Country. I don't use this feature too often, but I must admit, it's another great music discovery and rediscovery tool. Many people have moved on from the radio experiences of the old days, but I still think there's a place for it. Shifting over to Spotify, their navigation is a bit simpler. You have home, search, and library. Within home, you have up to six daily mixes, which are crafted specifically for you. These daily mixes are usually specially designed around a group of artists you like, and then Spotify will fill in the rest of it with artists that are similar to those artists. Each daily mix is distinctly different from each other. So if you want to switch it up entirely, you can do that. If you have an eclectic taste, the more diverse the mixes will be. But they don't stop there. You also get the massively popular Discover Weekly. Spotify has earned a reputation for having a powerful algorithm that can deliver this weekly refreshed playlist that recommends new songs that people genuinely like. On top of that, you've got Release Radar, 
a weekly playlist of hot new tracks from your favorite artists to help you keep on top of your music scene. Below that, Spotify offers a host of other recommendations, including artist mixes, auto-generated radio stations, and other playlists. To jump into the deep end and explore everything Spotify has to offer, just tap the search tab where you can select from a multitude of genres and dive in from there. I'll note that Spotify also has podcasts baked right in, which Apple Music does not. Apple has a separate app called Podcasts, which separates out music and podcasts. I'm sure some people like having podcasts mixed in with their music. That's not something I'm particularly a fan of. It would be nice if you could set it so that podcasts would just kind of disappear from Spotify altogether if you're not interested in that. But it's also not particularly bothersome. That's not part of music discovery, of course, but I thought it was worth a mention as it is a differentiator between the two platforms. As far as recommendations and music discovery go, it's a little bit subjective and one person might like what Apple is doing or Spotify is doing, but in my experience, I find Spotify has more quality ways to discover music and recommends music that I like more often than not. Plus, there's a couple more components that are hard to ignore with Spotify. For one thing, being the most popular streaming service on the planet means more people you run into are going to be Spotify subscribers than any other platform. When someone sends you a song to listen to, it's almost always a Spotify link. Same thing if they share a playlist. And of course, there's Spotify Wrapped. Spotify does a killer job in presenting this to all its users, a year in review of all of your music listening habits, and they give you easy ability to post and share to social media. Most non-Spotify users have absolute FOMO every year when Spotify Wrapped comes out. It's become a bit of a social phenomenon with millions of people sharing their Spotify Wrapped and conversations happening about it. Your social experiences around music get a bit better when you have Spotify. So with all that, Spotify wins the category of recommendations and discovery. Price and value. Now the last category is price and value. First of all, if you're looking to pay free 99, Spotify is the only option with a free tier. Apple doesn't give anything away for free. Spotify's free tier includes audio and visual ads that interrupt your listening experience and they don't offer their highest quality streaming. But hey, free is free. Now, both services are $9.99 per month for an individual, or if you're a student, it's $4.99. Spotify offers a duo plan for two people at $12.99 per month. Both services offer a family plan, which has room for up to six users. Spotify is $15.99 per month and Apple is $14.99 per month. So at face value, they are pretty similar in terms of price. Apple has managed to hold their family plan steady at a dollar less than Spotify, but otherwise it's really the same. That said, Apple can make things interesting because they have a much larger ecosystem than just music. Apple offers their Apple One subscription plan, which includes Apple Music, Apple TV+, Apple Arcade, and iCloud storage for just $15.95 per month. Most people with an iPhone are already paying for iCloud storage and music subscription, and some people are paying for Apple TV Plus, so it's not really a stretch to think that you would want to have this bundle. Apple says you save $7 a month by bundling. You can also get a family plan for $20.95 per month, which gives you all the services I just mentioned for six people. And it's only $6 more than just paying for Apple Music on the family plan. This is where the value really starts to kick in as you can save $10 per month by bundling. Now the real caveat here is that you have to be all in on Apple to get the full value of these bundles. While you can get Apple Music and Apple TV Plus on non-Apple devices, if you're using an Android phone, you will have no use for Apple Arcade or iCloud storage, so this bundle just doesn't work for you. But taking all things into account, Apple wins the overall value category because they have a cheaper family plan price and the option to bundle with Apple One. So that's Apple Music versus Spotify in 2022. 
Apple takes the categories of audio quality as well as overall value. And Spotify takes the prize for compatibility and music recommendations. What did I miss? Do you have a preference between Apple Music and Spotify? Is there some other reason one or the other is better? Please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching the video and if you found it interesting, do me a favor and click that like button. It helps recommend the video to others who might be interested in the topic. And if you wanna see more of my reviews, click that subscribe button. Lots more reviews like this one on the way on all kinds of services that we use every day. Thanks and we'll see you in the next one.